Okay, there is such a thing called being assaulted by a lot of art and that's the story for today's episode. Day 3 morning was dedicated to Versailles, the palace of Versailles. Versailles is a town outside of Paris, so it was quite a longish journey. We woke up really early at 5 o'clock because we wanted to reach as early as possible. From our hotel, Versailles was two train rides away. So when we got off at Versailles, crossed the road and wanted to take a good look at the train station itself, we realized how pretty it is. So when you are there, maybe you should take a minute or two to take the view in and appreciate it. The first view we had of the Palace of Versailles, the entrance of it was a head-on view. We started walking faster and uh, we had to cross a signal, which we did. And even before we hit the gates, we saw this magnificent bronze statue of Louis the Fourteenth. The Palace of Versailles was home to Louis the Fourteenth, so you can imagine the opulence in which he lived. The green glory of the statue was such that you could almost feel like the horse was going to leap into life any moment and start running on the cobblestones, like you could almost hear its hooves on the stone. So after making a couple of pictures of the statue, when we were walking towards the gates, we realized it was just the two of us in the whole area. The scale of it is so awe-inspiring, it is so huge. We walked past the gates and we weren't prepared for what was in store for us. We had the entire Versailles garden to ourselves. We couldn't believe our luck, so getting up at five o'clock in the morning had paid off. In the soft morning light with only two humans beholding it, the palace looked rather melancholic or uh, it was probably just my imagination. There was an immense quietude to the whole place. We walked a little away from the palace itself and towards the garden and uh, we came across this beautiful fountain, uh, the pictures of which we had seen on the internet. We saw the water in the fountain reflecting the golden frogs, the golden turtles and the human figures and all these gilded things were gleaming in the morning sun and then there they were, all these copies of some of the most popular statues, marble statues, the sculptures, sometimes even groups of sculptures dotting the whole garden, the green garden. Even the copies of these sculptures, the statues were so beautiful that it felt like they were pretty much full of life, although they were still. And it felt like we were sort of in conversation with them, although I'm not sure if they could hear my thoughts about them. The garden is really, really huge. So after a few minutes, I found myself having wandered away from my husband and I ended up on this small pathway which led to a restaurant which was not open yet. Even the pathway to the washrooms was dotted by these statues. My husband got busy with his camera, making images of the whole place, the statues and everything, which means I had my moments of solitude as well. After a while, we realized that we had to enter the palace. When we walked away from the gardens to see if there was already a queue, there was, and it was quite long. And this, despite booking our tickets online way before we even landed in Paris. So you can imagine how much longer the queue was for those who wanted to buy the ticket at the venue. So the queue moved slowly past these gilded gates and uh, we hit the entrance, we saw how the window frames were also gilded and uh, you know the top part of the roofs were also gilded. And when we entered the palace itself, we were already welcomed by groups of sculptures in the very first room. So at this point it's pretty obvious that there are going to be rooms after rooms, corridors after corridors full of paintings and sculptures and cutlery and these massive curtains and exquisite furniture and everything that made the palace what it was. And of course, along with all these works of art that were acquired over the centuries. Again, at this point, I want to share that you can either go for those audio guides that these places have, or you can have some of your favorite audio guides downloaded on your phone. And then in one of the first rooms, maybe the second or the third, I saw a man engrossed by a painting of a royal lady. He was sitting on one of those benches like an island uh, amidst people who were moving uh, from room to room. So apart from these paintings and statues, there was a lot of royal cutlery with amazing patterns and motives 
of full of vibrant colors same with the furniture there everything about them spelled luxury opulence royalty as palaces always do while most of the rooms were rich in color and texture there was this one room with pastel green geometrical patterns and it was a nice respite from the explosion of colors and we realized how everything was beautifully creatively made the clocks the vases the curtains the beds the headboards pretty much everything not to forget that i did think about some of these countries having colonized other countries and how that might have contributed to all this opulence uh that's a whole other conversation for another day but for now i'm guilty of uh recollecting this experience for the sake of beauty for the sake of art one of my favorite parts of the palace of versailles is this corridor that is home to the four seasons the four humors of man the four elements the four forms of poetry the four parts of the day you could see spring autumn summer winter the four seasons the four humors of man being melancholic phlegmatic choleric and uh, sanguine the four elements being earth fire water and sky or ether the four parts of the day being dawn noon dusk and night and my favorite the four parts of poetry being lyrical pastoral satirical and uh, epic there was a sense of simplicity austerity to this particular corridor because uh, it was devoid of rich colors uh, the marble statues themselves were housed in this stone corridor and uh, the floor had these black and white tiles a lot of these works of art are known to have been commissioned by emperors and people in power to sort of beyond par if not surpass the art that was created in italy especially during the renaissance which is a great testament to the sheer excellence that renaissance masters had achieved in italy uh, be it in painting or sculpture or any other form of art at this point i have to talk about the copy of the coronation of napoleon mind you this is a copy of this celebrated painting i mean I'm no art expert but if I hadn't known that the original was in the Louvre and you had told me that this was indeed the original I would just buy it We couldn't believe the size of it it pretty much covered an entire wall and uh, we were pretty amused how it was going to be to see the original in the Louvre the next day Also when we were moving from room to room corridor to corridor sometimes we could see the Versailles garden through these windows and uh, it was pretty much crowded by this time which again reminded me to be grateful to have had the entire garden to just myself only a few hours ago but inside the palace it was nice to be a part of that collective experience of witnessing some of the best art in the world you know uh, people have come from different parts of the world some of us had these lists of statues and uh, paintings we wanted to see no matter what because obviously you cannot remember everything you see so you will have some of your favorites that you don't want to miss and i also want to talk about sculptures or group of sculptures and paintings that depict scenes from certain wars you know not only have these great artists perfected the human anatomy but when you see these horses and other creatures non human creatures being painted it's crazy how anatomically aware everything is while a lot of rooms had these ceilings full of paintings there were also these rooms that had these intricately designed ceilings uh, etched in stone but what they had in common were these massive beautiful chandeliers at this point i want to talk about museum fatigue it's a real thing and it's not even just about being physically exhausted and not just your feet throbbing but a sort of mental exhaustion too at least to me after a while everything started looking the same and uh, i wanted to take a break i spoke to my husband and we went to uh, this angelina outlet angelina is a very popular uh, bakery chain in paris and uh, they had an outlet inside versailles they had a beautiful room which they had 
decorated nicely. We had our Paris ritual breakfast, you know, black coffee and croissant and some macaroons. And we also tried a couple of desserts that are made in Angelina. I had seen a lot of videos of Angelina and other bakeries on this amazing YouTube channel called uh, Parisian Vibes. And for memory's sake, we bought this beautiful tin box, which was full of these little caramel candies, which I obviously finished in a couple of days after we came home. They were so good, just the right amount of sugar with a tinge of salt. I'm salivating just remembering it. Anyway, we had this not so healthy breakfast, but hey, you're on vacation, so some sugar is no sin. The food was so pretty to look at, I felt guilty to eat them and I was looking at them for a while like a goon. And obviously my husband had to make a picture or two of me looking like a fool. And some wildlife had to be there. So we were extremely happy when we saw in one room two gilded golden lions sitting in all their grace. And then we hit this huge, beautiful staircase and we came down to find a souvenir shop there. When it comes to souvenirs, I'm guilty of being a hoarder. Uh, I don't care much about the riches in life. I like these tiny little things, you know, trinkets and copies of paintings and postcards and, and such. The kind of merchandise that these guys do is amazing. We have something to learn there, I think, to celebrate our culture, our heritage, our art the same way. Uh, again, that's a conversation for another day. And uh, I decided I'll be making a whole episode in which I'll just show the souvenirs, the all kinds of merchandise that we've bought from these beautiful art galleries and palaces and museums. So with sensory overload, we left Versailles. We had a lot to process and uh, the bus ride and the metro ride sort of helped. When we got out of the metro station uh, to go to Hotel des Invalides, I, I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. I'm sorry, French people. Uh, we realized that it was one of the prettiest metro stations we had seen yet. Uh, there was a fountain outside and uh, the street opposite the station was lined uh, by these pretty, pretty Parisian cafes. So this is where we chose one restaurant to have lunch in, uh, sort of refuel because we had to prepare to be assaulted by more art which we had planned to consume on the second half of the day. And I'll talk about it in the next video. Until then, have a great time, have a great weekend. Bye.